Yo, and we are live. Man, this is Satan Key Media back with another one, man. We about to get into a very controversial topic. This is an old topic here of the 50 late count. One that Myron Gaines originally came up with him, I believe. Let's get right into it. It's funny when you have debates on this. The red pill itself does not exist. With what exists is an and traitor. <laughs> you know what I mean? But Andrew again, Wilson. So your dad's like 80-something. Mm -hmm. Your dad was born in the 40s. Dude, he was alive during World War II. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, the end of it pretty yeah. much, right? Uh, Vietnam. Yep. Kennedy assassination. Yep. Mm. Civil rights. Yep. Marches. All that. Martin Luther King. He Malcolm X. Truth, he knows the truth. <laughs> and he was a Yo. he was a staunch, I mean, diehard conservative. I was born, he was a conservative, and when he dies, he's a I mean, he is as far right as they come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Loathe Democrats. And he put a really good foundation of loathing the left into me. Mm. And uh um, I was gonna ask where the where did so because like you know, a lot of people, right? I, I'll admit it, like I had very liberal a very liberal mindset before, and then as I got older, I was like, "What the fuck? This is bullshit!" Like you become wiser, you get older, and then you start making money, and you're like, "Wait, what do you mean I got to give this to, to people that don't want to work? This is stupid!" Mm -hmm. And then you naturally just start to become more and more conservative and Republican. Mm -hmm. You know, it is what it is. Um, for you, you never had that. No, I guess you no, know your was, voice. Right and my mom always backed his play, but I mean, my earliest memories are of my dad looking at the television mm -hmm. with the Clintons on. You know, and going, this guy's a fucking traitor. He, I, I can't believe it. This son of a bitch needs to get put in irons. I mean, that's my early memories of, of my father. You know, and I'd walk the in the living room and he'd be like, hey, son, how you doing? Hey, bro, I was talking his shit. I ain't gonna lie. Hey, Pops knew what he was talking about. You know, how, how is everything? He'd be like, fine. He'd go, oh, that's great. This fucking traitor. <laughs> that's, that's my earliest memories wow. of, uh, of my dad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um... Well, you're, you're old enough to remember Reagan. Well, what was that? Uh, not really. No? Not really. Like so, like, kind of Bush was, uh, the, uh, early Bush was, uh, first Bush was a little bit clear to me. Okay. And then after that, mostly Clintons are where where I started to cut my teeth on politics or even started paying attention. I was still a kid. A gotcha. Kid. Okay. Uh, Question. So, you mentioned the red pill. Mm -hmm. What's your thoughts on the red pill itself? Uh, well, so... <clears throat> It's funny when you have debates on this. The red pill itself Let's get does into not exist. It. What exists is an idea, a catalog idea, and you're using the red pill as a descriptor for this idea. Okay. That's all it is. So the idea, at least from my perspective of the red pill, is we want to know what is descriptively true before we make prescriptions for anything. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So let's start Facts. with what is descriptively true. The red pill says... Damn near like a doctor. I got to know your symptoms before I can prescribe you something. I got to know what's true about you before we can see if this red pill could work for you. Men and women aren't equal. That was the first thing I saw. And I was like, okay, maybe there's something here. Maybe there's something good here, right? Yeah. A little pushback to egalitarianism. They also make other claims, too. They make claims about what women are attracted to, what they're not attracted to, what men are looking for, what they're not looking for. Mm -hmm. They're trying to get into kind of the sociology of the pairing of men and women. Yeah. Mm. From my perspective, almost all of the descriptors of the red pill line up perfectly with Christian ethics. It's when you get into prescriptions that we start having troubles. So, for instance, I know you're infamous for this. Low key, though, the red pill did spring off like into like different <laughs> pills, apparently, like the God pill, the black pill, the purple pill. It's like, you know, they did them start mixing the colors and shit at a certain point. But yeah, it came down to a certain ideology on how you should move with women. This, yeah. right? But the have sex with 50 women yeah, thing, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Just, just so I make sure I don't get this position wrong, but I can give you like a counter example of what I'm saying. Yeah, sure. Can you lay your position on that out? Why? Yeah. Okay. So I, we would agree, right, that um, the dating marketplace has changed. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Women have changed, right? They think they're equal to you, the egalitarian thing that we talked about before. So since the dating marketplace has changed significantly and women have more – sexual experience now than ever before because they think they're men and they can have sex and have relationships just like men etc and be promiscuous and not deal with the same ramifications yeah women yeah psa you cannot fuck without no emotions in it i don't and if you can you're broken let's just get that out the way if you can fuck a person without no emotion involved you are a broken woman um what guys have to do is kind of go in and understand how 
women operate in today's day and age. And I think a, a good way to do that, right? Obviously, there's a multitude of ways. But one way to do it is obviously to have experience so that you're not getting into a relationship or a situation with a woman and you're not aware of her nature and you don't know how to deal with it. I kind of like, I yeah. like to use the analogy all the time. If you know you got a boxing match, right, in five years, right, with a very good and skilled opponent, well, what are you going to do? Are you going to play video games the whole time? Or are you going to train and get ready for the biggest fight of your life, which I look at as marriage? Because so it you makes you worldly. Everything. Makes mm. you worldly. Yes. Right? And yeah. It, yeah. I, I, I think... And that is true. Low key dealing with different women give you experience across the board. Like there's gonna be women that you deal with on the higher social end of the spectrum. There's gonna be women you deal with the lower social end of the spectrum. And you can kind of just choose on what you want to deal with all of that. Like, you know, is it okay to like do you feel like it's okay to be with a girl who hasn't had a dad in her life? Sometimes it works out, most of the time it don't. I think I think we don't disagree that that's true. Yeah. The Christian ethics pushback to this would of be, course. but wait, you want, this is a requirement or something which is helpful to make you a high value man. Yeah. Well, this in turn would give this hoe value. <laughs> but I don't determine a guy's high valueness from um, having sex with a lot of girls. I think a man's, a man being deemed as high status or high value is from his effort and his merit that he develops on his own. And then the sure. women are byproducts. But he has experience now. And experience is going to help him be high value, right? I wouldn't attribute him being because there's guys that are high value that don't get girls. Like I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say, uh, yeah, like yeah, like they're successful, they're smart, they're ambitious, etc. Mm -hmm. But they don't get girls. Mm -hmm. um, maybe they don't go out enough. Maybe they don't care to. Oh right, right. But, yeah. but they're more likely to get them if they want them, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah they're in a better position. Yeah, they're because because it's a byproduct. But my thing is, your your value as a man is not attributed to the amount of girls that you have sex with. I just think it's a bet it allows you to Yeah, that's facts. Yes. Like your notch count, it does not contribute to your value as a man. To be honest, it just contributes your experience sexually. That's all it did. Congrats. You got experience in sex. But as a man, you can have all the sex in the world and have no experience as a man. Be a better test of care. You're you're be you're better able to assess the character of women when you've dealt with them before. So that you don't get finessed out of the value that you created but wouldn't the entailment of that be that you're high value like the entailment of i have x amount of experience that helps me with my value like that's a that's going to be a portion of that and so so kind of the the rebuttal that we would have is we would say okay maybe i, that's I just don't attribute a, a, like a man's sexual experience to him being high value i think it helps him with assessing um a partner a partner mm -hmm. but but i don't but but so Myron Gaines is debating the 50 leg count with Andrew Wilson, like a conservative, you know, like a God, God fearing man, red pill, all that good stuff. And was good asset gaming. Appreciate you for stopping by. Him being high value is completely independent of having sex with a lot of girls. I think. Yeah. And you, you being a man like does not depend on how much women you had sex with. Like, let's just get that out the way. The women are a byproduct of his success. Okay, so he, so he is successful. Yeah. It's easier for him to get these checks. Yes. Right. And I think if he's going to go ahead and partake in women, he should have some experience is what I think. Gotcha. Especially when he's higher value and he has a lot to lose. But I'm not going to sit if, – so if I take two guys, right? Mm -hmm. One guy is making – you know, one guy is wildly successful, et cetera, and another guy is wildly successful. One has a partner count of 1,000. The other one has a partner count of zero. To me, they're still both high value. Just one chose to use his value to attract way more women than another. But would you make it a prescription then? Would you tell men you should do this? It's good for you to do this. I think if you're going to go and be marriage-minded and try to find a girl to take seriously, you should have some experience. Hey, yo, chat, let me know your thoughts. thoughts. Let me know your thoughts and what you think about it. I don't it. think so, man. I don't, because, I don't because see you're high value. If you're saying high value, we want this thing, yeah. and this thing is to get married yeah. to a high-value woman, right? To somebody who you consider to be virtuous and good mm -hmm. and this type of thing, right? Mm-hmm. If you're saying that having sex with a multitude okay. of partners yeah. is then going to up your chances of being able to do this thing, to accomplish this thing, then mm. it, it I don't see how it's not attributing to the value. I, I, I completely uh, – a man's value in him having sex, I, they're independent to me. Okay. I, I look at – like you can be a virgin as a guy and still be a high-value dude. Is how I look at it. Mm -hmm. I think the women are just a byproduct of your value. But I mean, it is a prescription that you would make? If you're um, – <coughs> your prescription as far as – oh, the 50 girls. Yeah. Yeah, you're pretty much asking, like, would you suggest to a guy that yeah, maybe you should go around, sleep with 50 women, then go get married? Like, would you prescribe that? 
And truthfully, I wouldn't personally. I would personally, I would say, look, man, just go out there and get you like a good like five, ten bodies, and you'll be all you can manage with that. You could be able to gauge female nature with just that. Fifty is a lot. That's a that's a lot of bodies. <laughs> yes, but you can be high value and not take that prescription. Right, my but you must see some value then in prescribing it. More and the value is from protecting your value. Does that make sense? Sure. Like, yeah, 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 that yeah, totally yeah. makes sense. The value, yeah, the value but, is you protecting your value, your but you don't need the women for that value. Right, but I think that it, here's the entailment. Yeah, sure. So if you're prescribing, mm -hmm. have sex with 50 women, mm -hmm. okay, um, this is your prescription because, and the prescription has value, then whatever the hoes are that they're sleeping with, that's an entailment. So the hoe has to have value. Not necessarily. Well, you could call them like pawns. I mean, they would be necessary for you to sleep with 50 women, right? No, because not necessarily because what ends up happening, because a lot of the girls, let's be honest, they'll be bimbos, stupid chicks, idiots, mm -hmm. morons, lower class, lower status women. But maybe. necessary for you to sleep with so that you can, right? I mean, so you, you can, can get that by. Prescription. Now, gaming, look, man, nine times out of 10, the first woman you have sex with is not going to work out. Nine times out of 10. If you can get by, right, with If it less, works out, A. Hey, sure. But I think a shit. decent barometer is 50 in today's Promise day. Pay you for the heartbreak now, kid. It will put you in a position where you'll experience a multitude of different girls with different personality types, different behaviors, different yeah. red flags, different green flags, etc. So you'll have a general rubric of like, okay, these girls that go to the club all the time probably aren't good. I've dealt with like three of them now. Okay, these girls that are go to soror that are from a sorority and yeah, maybe not so good. So like you kind of have an idea of like, all right, this is you, you get a, a generality of things. That's an excellent well, point. So that's an excellent point. Yeah, you go around to different groups of women. The women that you met, mess with in college, these women that associate with being liberal, women that associate with being conservative, women that associate with certain sports. Like, you learn to get into these group of women and you learn to be like, okay, I can deal with this or no, I can't deal with this. It's damn near just having that experience with, like, different groups of women. To, like, the olive branch. Yeah. Uh, the meeting. That's Apple. where the 50 lay count I would could be not say for a second. There ain't no way you fuck 50 girls and they were all just from the same group. That the more sexual experience you have and the more worldly you are, that you're not going to have experience in dealing and with worldly facts. women. And this is facts. There's yes, no doubt. His personality. Women who aren't worldly. And, and his still mindset. have experience in both. His character and his I'm mindset that I think it's determines a, a man's value. To say. I'm going to prescribe that you go sleep with, let's say, let's just say it's 20, right? It doesn't even have to be 50, okay. 15, 10, 5. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Reasonable. You and I both know the types of women those guys are going to be sleeping with are going to be easy women, and they're going to be low-value women. They're basically going to be hoes. So if that's the case, that the hoes are yeah, going to be Yeah, let me know what you with, think, Chad. Let me know what you think. Now entailed that hoes have to have value or else you couldn't sleep with them. Mm. I think it's kind of a... Nah, I, mean, I feel like... The women don't have, or hoes don't have value. They're just attracted to value. So a man who has value, they're always going to be attracted to just no matter what. If they just, if he has perceived value, they will be attracted. It doesn't mean that the woman has value. So I think he might have got it mixed up there. I mean, I think all women have inherent value, though, even hoes. Yeah, because, that's because, what I'm because, saying, because, though, because, 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 like, all, oh, all females have some uh, type sexual of value partners. Because it's like 10 to 5 sexual partners. You know, instead of 50, let's lower it down to 10 to 5. Like, because they just, they're just they women. Mm -hmm. But as far as, like, attributing that value to yourself and making taking her serious, I think that's a different thing. So you got to figure out which ones are, you know, <clears throat> worth a relationship right. and which ones aren't. And I think the way to do that is through, obviously, experiencing Now, from them. our view, from the Christian ethicist view, sure, they have no value. They only have human value. Okay. But they do not have, the, I would consider them at the lowest end of the, if they're not virgins, like what of the value of the value hierarchy, women who are very promiscuous and okay. they see sex as Fair. they see sex as a tool mm -hmm. or as a utility or as a manipulation device. Yeah, watch or out for them. Like this uh, instantly, uh, the the Christian ethicist is going to look at this and say this is completely sinful, needs to stop. You're totally valueless, yeah, right? right? But, your humanity is still very valuable. You of as course. a person still very valuable. Your salvation is really important to yeah. us. Yeah. But your sinful, your this type of sinful behavior from our perspective, is completely degradating to society, and we need to stop it by almost any means necessary. Because what ends up happening, it's like an enclosed system. Mm -hmm. What ends up happening, from my perspective, is that degeneracy leads to degeneracy, leads to degeneracy, leads to degeneracy. Okay. And there never seems to be a pull back. downward spiral. It's always a push forward. I mean, we're talking about shit now. You guys couldn't even imagine. 
what we're talking about now with like transferries and all this different stuff. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Man, you couldn't have even fathomed so that. You call it? That's a that's a new one. Now, could you have even fathomed that this would that we would be talking about child genital mutilation? I mean, who yeah. would ever oh. have envisioned yeah. that this would be the world we live in? Yeah, it's crazy. But if you back it up, if you yeah, if you're in your late twenties. Trust me, yeah, you know what he's talking about. Like, would you ever imagine we was talking about transgenderism? Like, would you ever imagine that'd be a topic? You being in school with the boys' bathroom and the girls' bathroom, just clear cut from day one that we would now have problems with that. Look at kind of the slippery slope argument, quote unquote. Mm. This started with an LGBTQ push for equality, mm. and the next, and once they That's have facts. it, you have nothing else to complain about. You have to move the goalpost to the next victim group. Yeah, then yeah. you have to move the goalpost to the next victim group. Yeah. And it becomes more and more and more absurd. And that's why you'll see the pendulum eventually is going to swing back the other way by necessity. If if I may, we're not arguing on a, I want to say, religious standpoint. It's more of a logical standpoint. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, let's be honest here. You yourself, if you weren't versed in women, you can choose for yourself the wife you have today, right? Yeah, that's You're true. Girl. So on mm. some level, we do need to okay. have women... As I want to say pawns, I said pawns earlier. That's kind of, kind of wrong. <laughs> I would say as I want to say an experience. No, nah, no, nah, let's be with the practice dummies. Yes, so we're gonna call them. Yes, the, the fifty girl lay can we just call them practice dummies, crash test dummies. For yourself, the wife you have today, right? Yeah, that's true. So on some level, we do need to have women as I want to say pawns. I said pawns earlier. Kind of nah, wrong. but I would I, say as. I, no, I don't really support the whole LGBTQ movement. I just don't. Well, actually, you know what? You can do whatever the hell you want. I don't care. What goes on in your bedroom goes on in your bedroom. When you try to push it on in the media and on kids, that's where I have a problem, and that's where I stand against you. I want to say an experience the booster movement. to understand what I really want in my life or what I actually need. So I think on some level, you still need to have that like experience as a man, I, I think. Yeah, I mean, um, I definitely see your um, the Christian view. viewpoint. In the, and I think all religions pretty much have, whether it's Islam, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Judaism, uh, Christianity, they're all pretty much, hey, like sexual degeneracy, it's not in our best interest here from a religious standpoint, which I completely understand, which yeah. that's why I'm, I'm, when I dispense this advice, it's more from a uh, strategical, it's, it's a strategic standpoint of, okay, if you're not a religious guy, etc., right, mm -hmm. most women are not religious, right? They're just not, unfortunately. Facts. Most people are secular in today's day and age. So I look at it like, okay, even if the you, religious... Most women run away from religion and go into the crystals and spirituality because they don't want to be held accountable for their actions. Uh -huh. <laughs> even the religious, yeah, are more secular, yeah. Right? There you go, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, like, uh, you know, even uh, so, my thing, I look at it like, okay, though religion is great, and I think it's a great framework for people to operate in. Unfortunately, we don't have those like training wheels anymore. So, I think women will reject Christianity because they say, "Oh, I can't be a hoe." Islam too. Oh, I can't dress scandalously. Women will reject a religion just off that. It may be, have the best intentions for them. It may be the best way to live their lives. But because they can't have a very petty freedom, they'll reject it. Like for guys to Due really to feminism. Like move in Due this to new feminism. sexual marketplace where Not all the women, before, these girls a lot of the time are women. fucking 304s. How's a guy that's been a virgin his whole life, super devout, you know, has the rose card glasses on, doesn't know how women really move in today's day and age, how's he going to be able to tell if a girl really likes him or she's just selling him a dream, like a hey, pure, what's up, like, good like, time? Won't know. Right now, of course, thank God, there's content like this right. where we might be able to curb him having 50 bodies, and he might be able to only do 20, 30, 40. He might not need the full 50 because we're telling him, hey, this is what it is, right? Oh, they always say a smart yeah. person learns from their mistakes, a wise person learns from other per another person's mistakes. Yeah. Hell, on this show, we tell you guys our mistakes all the time. So people maybe are, with all this information, they're able to curb it, right, and learn from an earlier standpoint. But a lot of guys, what I've noticed is a lot of guys are stupid. Let's just keep it a thousand. They <laughs> got to fucking burn their hand on the kitchen stove to, to figure out that it's actually hot. Um, and that's, that's, what, that's what a lot of guys got to low-key burn their hand, man. They got to get burned. Like, some of y'all be doing some wild things with these women, and, and the only way you're going to learn not to do it again is to get your heart broke. Once you tear your heart out and you got to pick it back up, that's when you learn your lesson. And it's a beautiful lesson, I promise you. It'll make you stronger. That's why I, the information is usual. It's like for the general masses. Are there smart guys out there that will figure this shit out with less? Of course. Um, Painful. But I think for most guys, especially as hard-headed guys, with 50 chicks under your belt... Man, you should at least be able to figure out the girls that are worth a relationship versus the ones aren't. And then most importantly, the girls that are trying Facts. to sell you a dream of, oh, I'm pure, et cetera. And you, you find out that they're a 304. I have a question, Andrew. How would you solve this issue? 
solve the Issue problem of men fighting. Oh man, this is wives. yeah, yeah, yeah. This, Let's is, your, uh, this yeah. is pretty. This <laughs> is pretty complex. Okay, yeah. so so our, our adaptation is kind of like for today's day and age. If you're Igor, you funny, you funny for that one, Igor. You funny, Igor. This without the end. Don't go, hey, hey, you funny. Not yeah. like a religious guy, but what's your yeah? So yeah, you, so you know. so backing it off. Um, I'm not gonna get, let you guys get away totally with this. So I'm bringing it back. <laughs> okay, okay. Sure. it's not a diversion, sure. but I'm bringing it back. Okay, okay. sure. Okay. So um, from a secular perspective, mm -hmm. it can't be fixed. From a secular perspective, okay. it can't be fixed. Sure. Secularists okay. have no moral foundation at all. Like it or not, they don't. They and it, it really can't be fixed. Right. However, what I can point to is this. Let's assume for a second hypergamy is real, right? I assume that it is. Okay. I think, uh, I think I generally speaking, there's enough evidence that we can look at and we can say hypergamy is pro oh, at God. least it's real enough. <laughs> yeah, right. It's real enough. Agreed. It used to be under control. Hey, I could take. I could take. They a used to be joke. under That's control. Yeah, yeah. Religion used to put under like control. Like it or not, yeah, we had that shit under control yeah, and under lock and key. Religion, and shame, mm -hmm. families, fathers, yeah. all these things used to combat it. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Secularism destroyed all that. I agree. And so I agree. When I when I say to people, and I understand the argument, we're never going back to that, but we are. We are going to go back to that, and I'm going to explain how. It's not going to be in our generation, but if you look at the birth rates the global birth rates, they're in massive rapid decline, and it's a problem most people have no idea about yet, mm -hmm. how bad the population collapse is really going to be. It's very bad, especially the Western countries. But you know these stats. What age are women on average now getting married? Into their late 20s, 30s now. 30 is yeah. the average age, right? Yeah. I think it's 31 is yeah. the average age last time I looked. How many uh, kids are you going to have as a 31-year-old woman? Very few. Very few. Yeah. <laughs> well, these women are becoming quicker and quicker genetic dead ends, but so are secularists in general. If you look at re the religion... Oh, yeah, great. Man, y'all need to stop popping them babies out early because 31 is a bit late. It's late. It ain't It ain't too late, but it's a bit late. Just the religious reproduce far and away more. The biological reproduce. clock ticks every day. Don't stop this is no, going to become no worse woman. and worse and worse. As people leave the Protestant churches, they're moving towards Catholicism, Orthodoxy, more traditional churches. Mm -hmm. There's big pushes in those churches to have families and to have children and to reproduce. You know, Kath, you, you know the old uh, you know adage for Catholics, right? You know, they, if you don't have ten kids, you have no kids, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah, damn. Reproduction is the future. Yeah. The religious reproduce, and secularists are not reproducing. They're that's becoming, why London has taken over, been taken over by Muslims. That's right. right. That's yeah. right. And if you look, at, yeah, bro, some of these Muslim countries, bro, I promise you, the average kid count, the average family kid count is like seven. Seven kids per household is average in some of these countries. Like, wild. And, you know, we, we, I'll only touch on this very briefly, but even if you look at Israel, uh, Israel is the only well, Western damn, Jason. nation that has a reproduction rate that Jason is Jason does not stable. like pressure. It's actually okay. over what is necessary because they took one look at it and went, well, shit, okay, man. we got to get these numbers up. How are we going to do that? So they implemented an in vitro well, fertilization program for free let your thoughts for loose. the entire nation. Really? Yeah, yeah, for the whole nation. And okay. in vitro fertilization. You can go have it done 12 times and they'll pay for everything. Interesting. In order to keep those numbers up. Okay. Because they, they look around, they're like, we're surrounded by, yeah, by yeah, everybody, yeah, yeah. right? The, yeah, it makes we sense better, why they would do it. We better have a future <laughs> army, right? We better yeah, have a future yeah, army. Yeah. But the West has not rung, you know, rang the alarm bells just yet. They're just now talking about it in Congress. Yeah. But then what's another side effect of that? Your domestic population is not reproducing. How do you keep the number at 330 million? There's only one way to do that, right? Yeah. yeah. And that's going to be with immigration coming in. Yeah. And, well, that creates instability all, all on its own. And problems. then what happens if you start pulling in immigrants from other nations and they have a reproduction crisis? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So if you if you look at all the downsides of, of a coming population collapse, you can see that religion's going to make a pretty heavy comeback. And you so? see it okay. already being fought about now. Secular ethics... Oh, God, you know how much people have turned to the whole Crisis King crowd, which is okay. Hey, man, if you want to be the Crisis King type of person, hey, uh, go for it. As long as it makes you live a good life, as long as you follow it the right way, go for it. But, no, nah, a lot of people are turning to religion because they're seeing, like, bro, the debauchery. They're seeing the degeneracy going on on a daily basis, and they're seeing it from godless people or from people who choose to just follow, follow idols. Can't offer like musicians, anything, movie can stars, offer and shit. <laughs> only hedonism, but ultimately, it can't give people purpose. And that is fact. Just says go find. That is facts, purpose. Jason. The government do but take the care of those immigrant mean? kids. That doesn't help anybody. Mm -hmm. 
How does that help people to tell them, well, just go find your own purpose? Like, well, that's what I'm oh, here yeah. for. Make sure to like, subscribe to the channel, man. We appreciate y'all. To find purpose. Yeah. Secularists can't provide that. So I agree with you, Andrew. I think in the future, things will change. However, mm -hmm. right now, mm -hmm. what do you do? Well, so right now, you should try. I, I mean, this is me again. Mm. If I look at the historic trends, most men were never able to reproduce anyway. Okay. Facts. Some 60, 70 percent. Yeah. They were never able to reproduce. Only a minority. Ever. That's why we have double the female ancestors to male ancestors, right? I would still say that the best thing that you can do is to try to live an integrity-filled life. And that at the end of that life, regardless of how it went, right, maybe you didn't get. So that means most of humanity came out of the alphas, pretty much. Just remember that. Most humanity came out of the alphas because only 30% of men were, I guess, blessed with the opportunity to reproduce. It's only in today where we made it fair, to where, well, let me not be too crucial about this, where even beta males can get a woman now. That hedonistic pleasure that you wanted, um, but neither did your ancestors. They didn't get that either. Mm -hmm. And I think hypergamy has always been this thing, this, this issue, and that women have been this way. We have Helen of Troy to look at. We have Samson and Delilah to look at. We, we know that this is the nature of women, but yeah. we also know that most men were never able to reproduce, yeah. ever. And most of the women that we have right now, if we have men going out and turning out hoes, if we have them going out and turning out hoes, doesn't that hurt the future men? You know what I mean? Who want to get, uh, lay down and marry these women? Oh shit! Okay, if we're Jason. going out and turning them out, that Dropping seems that like knowledge. it's counterproductive to me. I see your perspective. I could also argue though they've already been turned out. <laughs> like, God damn! They're already there. They're already made. Damn, there, well, I mean, there had to be a Damn ground fresh. zero. There was a ground zero penis well, somewhere. Remember, you mentioned feminism <laughs> yeah. and the culture itself, the music. Yeah. They yeah. did all the work for them. Yeah. We just come in and, hey. Well, I mean, he said it earlier. Like, if you're going to continue to stay secular, it's, it's it, never, which never. I agree. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's never. And that's why I kind of, why because I'm looking at it like, okay. Because I, I, I see, um, and I want to actually ask you what, how you think it'll go back to being a religious state. But let's assume that it's not, right? Let's mm -hmm. assume that people are going to continue to live free and woo, secularism, etc. I'm looking at it like, okay, there are guys out there that want a family. There are guys out there that want to one day, because I think the nuclear family is the backbone of any society, any thriving society. And the nuclear family is a religious thing. Matter of fact, the reason why we're so fucked up now is because we don't have a lot of nuclear families anymore, right? When I was in UAE, for example, I saw strollers everywhere, families together, etc. I don't see that here. Hell, even in Miami, I see people walking dogs more than walking with kids. Yeah. So, um... The little so, dogs too. Yeah, the little, little ones, too, the weird dogs, ones. Yeah. So I say, I say all this to say, I say all that to say this, for the guys out there that do want a family one day, etc., and I don't want them to get destroyed by the divorce machine, right? Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, you want a family, you want a wife. This is very risky in 2024 with the Facts. way women are programmed, yeah. right? So I think one way to deal with it is to have ex yeah the way these girls are taught to like replace you at a moment's notice if you don't do this you're replaceable but they don't ever tell women that oh yeah guess what you're replaceable too experience with them is so you you can at least rule out the bad ones i'm not telling you to find the perfect girl but at least be able to rule out the bad ones so that you can have a family with a chick and she won't destroy your life but what if That's there's the reason. what if there's a better way in marriage though sure go ahead. what about covenant marriage Okay. What about using covenant marriage and the ecclesiastical authority of the church to govern the marriage where you actually have communities? One of the big things that's missing from... Well, here's the problem with that, though. Here's the problem with that, chat. If we had a religious-based type marriage, there'd be no divorce. Like, women would actually have to have more sense when they choose a man, and they wouldn't be able to get a man for money because, yeah, divorce is forbidden. So if you get in this relationship with a man, you're in it for life, sweetheart. That's what I'm saying. That's why we can't do it based off the church's guidelines and we do it based off a state guideline because in the church guideline, you're all in on marriage. On the state guideline, you could back out whenever you want. Can you explain that to me? Because yeah. I'm not Christian. There's so a difference between your, a holy so, agreement well, or Islam a covenant and a business agreement. They, they wouldn't call it that, okay? But mm -hmm. in Muslim nations, they have uh, Sharia law. Sharia courts will actually adjudicate marriages. They'll adjudicate all sorts of things from the religious authority. Yeah. Christians have always had this. We've always had an ecclesiastical authority. The Catholic Church has it. The Orthodox Church has it. The ecclesiastical authority Facts. is a way to uh, govern your life and govern your marriage. Exit the state. 
Oh, and you can okay. enter into a covenant marriage, and they do not just let you go. They do not just release you from your vow. And if you have community pressure, that's Bruh. the social shame you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. What's what's going? Like yeah, bro. If you was divorcing back, bro, back in the day as a female man, if you was divorcing your old husband. That man better be putting hands on you. I promise you. I mean, mean ass hands. I mean, like everybody looking at you, like yeah, you need to get away from bro right right now. But if not. If he being a hard working man, you just want to leave because, oh, you just feel a little bit unhappy. Bro, there was none of that. There was no, there was no, oh, it's about me. There was none of that. Like, there was no selfishness being accepted. Going on right now. I'm a fan like, of is you for the community yeah, or you shun? You should be. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. what's happened about instead about. is we have traded a good ecclesiastical foundation with community for this crazy ass contract. Where it's easier to break than a cell phone contract. Yeah. Yep. And women have all the incentive in the world to, to do break it. it. Yep. Why in the world would we ever? Uh... That boy said easier to break than a cell phone contract. That's why most men don't want to get married out here. Because something that you're putting your life into, a woman should not be able to break that easy. It shouldn't be that easy. Uh, endorse from a Christian perspective to get involved in a secular marriage. That's the worst idea on planet Earth. We should be recommending covenant marriages through the church, governed through the church, and those communities, your own community. Gotcha. That's where you get the social shame. That's where you get the pressure. Yeah. That's where because right now, if you go and you involve yourself in a secular marriage, you go to the courthouse, you get married tomorrow. Yeah. Where's the community? Yeah. Where's the support structure? TikTok. Maybe, maybe your family, maybe not. TikTok. Yeah. You know, it's just you and her against the world. That's insane. Yeah, you know what wild. I mean? You have children, you have financial woes. You got to have a community. Yeah. You know? Well, there's a reason why the, the phrase, it takes a village to raise a child. That's why. Mm -hmm. Because, and, and shame is a very powerful thing. And I agree with you because we've talked about this. If you're going to get married, we always tell guys, if you're going to get married, do it. Through, don't, make sure the state's not involved, right? Mm -hmm. go, if you're a Muslim, go ahead and just get mar married at the mosque. Or by the church. I, uh, or, or by the church. I wasn't yeah. aware. What's it called? Ecclesiastic? Yeah. The, Missing by the church, basically. Yeah. The okay. Church. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Same uh, thing. Okay. So. Yeah. Um, and if you have marital problems, you go to the church. Yeah. And I think that's a fantastic way to mm -hmm. get around it. You know what I mean? Um, and you should. Yeah. In, in, I mean. If you look at the most successful marriages. Yeah, because these marriage counselors, bro, they be taking the female side and they be breaking up marriage. You might as well take it to a priest who's supposed to keep the covenant of God together. Because these marriage therapists, man, look, some of them don't even believe in God to keep your covenant of God, God together. Sorry about that. In the United States, you want to know what some of the most successful ones are? They don't want to keep are? your marriage marriage together. For sure. Why? Yeah. The Mormons have their Maybe. own church. They get more money if your wife breaks up with you and keep on coming to them for therapy. They don't care about your marriage. Church authority and community yeah, that applies man. significant social pressure. They're like, no, you don't get to just do do your husband like this. You don't get to just do these types of regular well, therapy. Cool. They don't even involve the state at all. Yeah. State's not even that they, they, you get married within the community in yeah. the eyes of God, because that's what marriage is. Marriage has nothing to do with a state contract. Yeah. The state should only be involved in things which are good for the entirety of the nation. Marriage is now not good, and that's terrible. That's an awful position to be in, to have the state promoting something as toxic as marriage through the state now is. It's a raw deal for men. It's a bad deal even for women, ultimately, hmm. because they have the incentive to do it, and then they seem to regret it. They, yeah. they take years of regretting this, and it's like, if we're going to change this, fine. But let's actually move towards that, towards actually changing these laws actually moving against the laws and where the trad cons get it wrong is they refuse to engage with the red pillar saying listen we're getting destroyed men are just getting destroyed out here they're getting wrecked everywhere right Man. you hear their stories over and over again and i see these guys relationship education financial wrecked the daily wire they're like well you could get lucky no, <laughs> you could you you might get lucky. One of these days, I got lucky. Look at me, I got lucky. Yeah. Look at look at look at here. He got lucky too, yeah. right? Well, that's stupid advice. Why yeah. would you ever give advice like that? Instead of looking at the problem objectively and saying, "Look, there's really nothing inside of our religious purview that says that we shouldn't be pushing back against state authority for marriage, mm -hmm. since we consider it to be." Uh, you know, in the eyes of God, not in the eyes of the state. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what we should be pushing for. That's what the traditional conservative side is supposed to be pushing for. Religious institutional marriage, forget the state. Totally worthless. Well, so Facts. Keep the state out of marriage. Man, look, once you go through that door of marriage, man, they got to lock and seal that. There is no divorce. Y'all in it for life. It's going to make y'all better people. 
Bro, when there is no exit, you're forced to deal with what you have to deal with. You're forced to work on yourself in that marriage instead of just running on to the next person who's going to accept lower standards. It's like it's wild because that's literally what's going on out here. Like they women will leave a marriage just to get with a man who has lower standards. So instead of we're doing that, making themselves better. I look at it like, OK, well, men too. Men do it mistake. too, though. Let's say you don't have the 50 body count. You got five. Mm -hmm. Right. Or maybe you're a virgin. You get married to a chick. You didn't know that she was a 304 before. Mm -hmm. And then she goes ahead and, you know, breaks up with you and, you know, breaks your heart and shit like that. Well, at least you can get out of it now where you don't owe a bunch of money That's right. to her or whatever it may be. That's one way. But, you know, again. It's also when you have a church backing you. Right. That's yeah. a heavy force. People forget the institutional power and community power churches of have. Course, and of community shame is brutal. Yeah, it is brutal. And you have some churches. They have, I mean, that serious good institutions. It's the last institutional authority of the right. And we don't use it for anything. Yeah. yeah. And that's and that's why, like, my thing is, I'm a because when I give my advice, I'm like, all right, I'm assuming they're not Christian. They're not devout. They're not. They're going to get with a chick that isn't Christian, not devout. They're secular, etc. So I'm like, okay, that's how most young people identify yeah. nowadays. Yeah. Right. We don't live in a Christian society anymore, unfortunately. Right. We do not. We don't. Um, so I'm looking at it like, okay, this is how you deal with the new normal. Is it optimal? Should you be running out there and trying to fuck 50 girls in general? Well, no, because it, it well, yes and no, because chasing after girls, I've always said this. Going after women inevitably puts you in a situation where you're not fucking productive. You're fucking texting girls all the time. You're going out on dates. Facts. You're going to nightclubs. Mm -hmm. you're, 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 you're spending money consuming and resources. Spending money, yeah. You're spending resources. Like, the pursuit of women in itself is extremely labor-intensive. So yeah, it's financially draining. It drains your energy, and you really should be working on yourself. So, um, so yeah, it, it's, it's annoying. But, like, I look at it like I'd rather you do this work up front, know how women are, then... You do all this work, make yourself high value, then you have the time finally to go ahead and date, and then you go ahead and you date, you find a girl, she's really a whore, but she sells you a dream, you go ahead, you get married to this girl, and then bam, next thing you know, stays taking half your money. Dang. But with what you said, okay, we're getting married only through the church, or through a mosque, mm -hmm. or whatever, and you are not incentivized to leave me. Right. Well, I could, I could, I could, I could meet in the middle ground there because the guy isn't going to be destroyed. But knowing that most guys are going to do what? The dumbass going to go to the church. Sure, I'll go ahead and sign here, <laughs> so you can have half the money because I'm an idiot. Because yeah. that's what most fucking guys are going to yeah. do, right? Um, it depends on what we're pushing them towards. Yeah. You so know? if they're going to do that, right, and go through the, the what? Because because let's be honest. A lot of modern day women, they, they won't accept getting married just by the church or just by a mosque. They want the security. Yeah, they want the incentive and the security of, oh, if it don't work out, I can still be in his pockets after. And that's the problem. We kind of let them know to know it gets cut off. As soon as you break up with this man, it really should be that this man doesn't owe you anything no more. Because I'm going to be real with you. There's going to be less divorces. Women are actually going to want to work with their men more if they don't have that back door open. Yeah. That comes with but wouldn't that be a, a red flag? Manner. It, it, that's true. But wouldn't that, that would be, be the red flag where you're like, flag. wait, you won't get married to the church? I thought you loved me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're right. But there's so, but there's so, but dude, see, the thing is, is that we're having a higher IQ conversation here at the table because we're able to understand this. Yeah. Most guys are fucking idiots, man. Let's keep it a thousand. They're fucking idiots. They're like, pussy, pussy. Yeah. Okay, I'll sign the contract. I'll sign the contract. <laughs> like, it's crazy the things that guys will do oh. for women. It's fucking scary, man. Like, when it I is. do some of these consultations with these guys, and they say what they've done for women, etc. And it, looking back to, like, I'm an idiot, 2020 hindsight now, etc. But... When you're in love with a girl or you don't know better or whatever, like these guys really put themselves in very dangerous situations with these women. So I'm like, fuck, like if you guys are going to do this and sign your life away and go to a, go to a courthouse and marry this chick that you know has all these red flags, like, God damn, at least have some experience, man, before you go into the slaughterhouse. So that's how I look at it. But I agree with you, man. If we can go back where guys can go ahead and get married through the, um, the church or the mosque and there's no incentive for the woman to leave them. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. See the other, my own. Yeah, bro, everybody would be on board. Shit, I would take my... Shit, boy, I'll probably get married right the fuck now if that was the case. I'll be so dead honest with y'all. If that was the case, yeah, i get married right now because then every time, each marriage would be a way for every person to get better at that point. It'd be a way for you to get better as a man and she to get better as a union. Well, she to get better as a woman and y'all to get better as a union. That's, what's pro that's the problem. With that divorce measure in marriage... People don't got to work on themselves. It's just like 
just like a relationship. It's like there's always the breaking up factor. It's like, oh, yeah, y'all could be cool and all that. But when there's a breakup, that's it. It's like you don't really got to work on yourself in a relationship too much because you could always just leave. But now in a marriage, if you close that door and there ain't no divorce, there ain't no leaving. There's just, oh, yeah, I got to really work on myself or work with this person. Only other pushback then okay. really sure. is when I think – because you, you and I both know, probably all of us today will know, like high value man is kind of a nebulous term. Mm -hmm. Don't know exactly what that means, but I think, very her, nebulous. I think heuristically we know. Yeah. Right. It's very nebulous. So we can be like, you know, a guy purports himself well, has enough money to take care of himself, handles his responsibilities, that kind of thing. Yeah. I think we kind of know it when we see it. Yeah. And so I think that's fair. But when I think of high value too, I institute things like virtue. I think of virtues. I think of integrity, virtue virtue ethics those are the things that i would consider to be high value as well some stoicism thrown Facts. in there maybe okay. um all right the only the only drawback even for secularists because you can get secularists to move towards virtue ethics they may not they may reject god they may reject religion but they will act as though religion is real if you give them some foundation like virtue ethics and so the only drawback i really see uh, even from the secular side of telling them hey this will make you worldly that's going to hurt their virtue it's going to ultimately hurt their virtue to basically kind of man whore around, right? And that's something that later in life, reflectively, when they're 40 or 50, they might look back on and be like, hey, look, you know, that was, that I was not living a high integrity lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when it comes to, uh, so, so your pushback is what, uh, uh, because it lacks the virtue is what you're saying? Yeah, there's no virtue in promiscuity for men or women. I think you would agree with that, even as a secularist, that you, you said yourself. Uh, I would have to agree with that. I would have to agree with that, my damn self, to be honest. It's like, yeah, you're right. You're right. Being overly sexual as a man leads you down a bad path. Being over sexual as a woman leads you down a bad path. So he has a point. Man. It's a good point. Um, sleeping with a ton of women yeah. in and of itself is not a virtuous act. Maybe you think it's neutral, right? But it yeah, certainly it's has neutral. no virtue. Yeah, no, no, I agree. But for women... Right. It has a really bad side effect that yeah. doesn't even have for men. Um, and because of the gatekeepers of sex, there's even less virtue. I right? agree. I agree. That was a banger it point. takes two to tangle. And yeah. so anybody who's going to have sex with one of these women, they're going to be taking away from the virtue of themselves and the woman. And for me, if I when I look at men of status, mm -hmm. women of status yeah. who maintain their virginity, like I met a, a gentleman named Mason uh, when I was on whatever, dude square jawed real strong guy he maintained his you know his virginity he didn't seem like he was unaware of female nature to me but i can understand that probably plenty are right mm -hmm. yeah but he seemed like a really virtuous guy mm -hmm. you know what i mean and there is some kind of integrity to that that when you meet a man who has tons of virtue you'll follow him off a building right yeah, yeah, yeah. and so i think i think that mm -hmm. you know keeping virtue intact is another thing which in western society we should be pushing towards Understandable. Even from a secular framework, that seems to be more optimal. You know what I mean? Understandable. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, that's obviously ideal. Um, I just think with the way things are for a guy to... Fair use, by the way. Fair use. But damn, that was a great point he made. I ain't gonna lie. He's like, yeah, it's, a, it's not too virtuous of a man to go out there and just start slaying women back and forth. And the results were, bro, they never really turn out good. I'll tell you that right now. I'll be honest with y'all. Life, bro, with experience, never does. Like, I'm going to be real with you. Yeah, you can get your 50, but some of y'all be trying to go for 100. And look what that got you. A lot of y'all got something really, really bad, some type of sickness that's uncurable. And a lot of y'all just ain't got no bitch next to you even after 100 bodies. To be able to find that virtuous woman, he's got to deal with some women that aren't virtuous and the only way he's going to do that is through experience I'm, I'm looking at it more from like a uh preventive a preventative standpoint where it's like well it's pragmatic it's pragmatic yeah right? for, for in today's day and age right yeah. um if women weren't the way they are now i would tell guys stay a virgin yeah like fucking wait man like you know it, it, you know exercise that um exercise that discipline but nowadays with just the way women are it's like you almost get punished for being that nice guy and being extremely virtuous and nice to these girls because 
they don't reward that anymore. Like chivalry is dead, and I genuinely think yeah. women, modern day women, killed it. So it's like that's facts. Though I think that's optimal and the best way to go about it. I just don't think it's practical or pragmatic in today's day and age. Is my only issue. Well, I mean, the problem is there's a lot of truth in what you say. Yeah. And so you know, I'm a firm believer in accepting what is objective reality. It yeah. is objective reality that promiscuity inside of Western nations is now out of control to the point where reining it back in seems like almost a fool's errand. But I also think that if we can, if we can provide any pushback to move it the right direction, we should. Yeah, yeah. I mean, though, and, and now I'm actually like, you know, brainstorming here how we would do that. The only way we would do it is, yeah, you would have to make a religious state to do it because, quite well, at frankly, least, at least give a religious option. Right. And let the religious govern it as synergy. So, because, so the nations of old had a synergistic relationship. Mm. Yeah. It was not that the state was run by the church. I'm dead. So we should have the option pretty much to either get married by the church or married by the state. Like, at least give us that option. At least give us that. All right. Well, this is called a sealed marriage because you get married by the church, man, it ain't going nowhere. And then there's a state option where, all right, you can get married by the state, but, you know, she can always leave. But I guarantee you where most guys is going to go and it's going to give religion a big boost, if anything church just that the state worked with the church yeah why should the state govern Man, marriage? Shout so out you're, you're not a fan of separation of church and state then uh well not a separation i think though that we should not necessarily live in a state which is controlled by the church mm -hmm. but has a synergistic relationship okay your population needs to have some moral foundation mm -hmm. right you can't have people who you know even patriotism itself mm -hmm. used to be a big deal in the united states right yeah um, that was a unifying force. Mm -hmm. So there's all kinds of propaganda towards patriotism, mm -hmm. right? It was everywhere. Yeah. There was American flags and, you know, the patriotic messaging was everywhere. And so Make sure you like, subscribe. Appreciate y'all for tuning in. people through an ideology. Yeah. Religion does the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, if you can push any kind of synergy with the church, you don't have to make the... But make how it. would we get the young people to do that? Because my, my thing is, you know, so I, I see your perspective yeah. and I see your vision. I Like, I agree with you that religion absolutely curbs a lot of this bullshit mm -hmm. the problem is how are you going to get the young people to accept it like how are you going to get the young people to the be... same way that the leftists did it okay through moving through institutions as quickly as we possibly can and adjusting our propaganda at the national level the propaganda i want to see at the national level sounds like this get married young have a million children because we're going to tax exempt you from life mm -hmm. you know for life you'll mm -hmm. be tax exempt for life Three kids, mm -hmm. right? We're going to make it really hard for you to get a divorce because the state's getting out of it. You can only get married through your church. Mm -hmm. The state's not even going to offer a marriage certificate. We don't need to anymore because our job is to uh, push towards the health and welfare of the United States. And this is no longer healthy for the United States to have marriage through the state. It has become so bad that people who enter it that your likelihood of, of exiting clean is almost 0%, right? Yeah, ain't that the so truth. Impossible. You can do the same thing. You can have national rhetoric, national brainwashing campaigns, right? Just the other direction. Now, brainwashing has a negative connotation to So how are you going to override? And it, this is just like, I, 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 I genuinely want to get your opinion on this. Mm -hmm. How do we override the Cardi B's, the Sexy Reds? The, the you know the ridiculous music the ridiculous social media addiction that a lot of young people have the tiktok twerking the only fans culture that we have mm. the um sex work i would argue nowadays like young women are more inspired by sex workers than than anything else right like if you ask a, a bro women women fresh out of high school going straight to only fans bro trust me yeah they're inspired by the women that's making six figures a month off this shit a young attractive girl Who's your role model? And we've done it on the podcast a bunch of times. Who do they say? Kim K. Yeah. It's fucking crazy. Like, I've that's heard, what they I've aspire that, to be like and now. And it's like, it's yeah. sickening to listen to. So it's like, it's like, how are we going to override? Here's how you do it. All the degenerate propaganda yeah. has been put out there. Mm. Muslims are f fantastic at this. Yeah. And Christians are not. Mm. Muslims engage. What I've noticed about Muslims is they engage. They engage in ideology, man. Mm -hmm. They engage in political prescriptions and they're in your face about it. Christians have become soft and too nice. We, we have adopted Christianity to be a be nice religion, and it never was a be nice religion. It's On God, bro, Christians started off slitting throats out here. They thought, I'd be like, hey, hey, you ain't Christian? Come here, give me a head. It's like, bro, it wasn't like, it now it's just all nice, and they're accepting, and what, what the things that are what rejected in the Bible are now accepted in the church. It's like, y'all wilding. But... Islam, Muslims, 
Bro, they stood 10 toes down, standing on business every trip. Nobody can joke about the Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, but everybody can make jokes about Jesus and his sexuality. Yeah. It's supposed to be a get in your face religion. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be a no, you're wrong. You can skank, you're wrong, and you're a liar, and you're destroying the very fabric of society. But we don't see that engagement from Christians anymore because it's been so subverted by women saying, no, be nice. Yeah, yeah. What I would like to see is instead of theological debates going on all over the place between Christian versus Christian, and I'd like to see more Christians actually move into the political space mm -hmm. like I have. You even see guys like Fuentes did this. They move into the political space and they fight that way. They push back using Christianity ideologically through politics. Mm -hmm. And that's become very popular. Suddenly it starts picking up steam. You start hearing about things like Christian nationalism. You start hearing... Us here in this saying community do not support Nick Fuentes and the reason why, because YouTube would take us down if you even say anything about that boy. About Christian hierarchies and all these different ideas, not because or we're having obscure anything about theological debates, but because we're getting in your face politically. We're saying no, Christians aren't passive. No, Christians aren't sissies. No, Christians aren't supposed to just sit there while secularists rule us. That is a huge... <laughs> misinterpretation that people have that secularists are somehow better off having power than the religious that's insane secularists are not good at wielding power they have no moral grounding from which to wield it so if we really want to see change instead of trying to get into christian apologetics in order to have theological debates and theological discussions get into to christian politics and go get in their face and that i think will have more of a result in society than people can imagine. Is it going to happen mm. overnight? No. Hell is no. it going to be cross-generational? Yeah. But I'd rather see people push that direction. Okay. And you had mentioned earlier that you don't... Oh, God, man. Shout out, man. Hey, look, man. Christian aggression, man. Christians need to be more aggressive on this shit. If you're a Christian, yes, yeah, stand up for your book. Stand up for your beliefs. Don't accept the BS no more because y'all done let too much slide and now everybody sliding what they want on y'all. You don't foresee this happening like in our generation. No. Well, when do you foresee this like happening? Because it took the no left ditty. about th three generations to completely infiltrate all of our institutions. It's going to take us about three generations to infiltrate them ourselves. We have to get involved in again in culture. And we have to be confrontational. And we yeah, have we're to talking get... sixty to hundred years then. Mm. Probably sixty years. Yeah, but that's that's a blink of the eye. Yeah, yeah. It's a blink of the eye. Yeah, you like know what I mean? And it's alive. like maybe we can't save them all. Right. But we can at least start the process. And it's like I would rather start the process and start moving that direction and be realistic with the outcome. Right. The most beautiful churches in the world took three, four, five hundred years, thousand years to build. They were cross generational projects. Yeah. And it's like I'm not saying that we can save men right now. That would be absurd. What I am saying, though, is that men can save themselves by working towards that goal. Yeah, religion's always been a very good way to um, increase productivity. Obviously, keep your head on straight. You could take that personally, too, man. You just working towards a goal, you could save yourself out of a situation. Just working towards your goals. Avoid a bunch of stupid shit. You know, for, you know luckily, if you got discipline, you can avoid it. You know, avoid, you know, being an alcoholic or doing drugs and doing all those stupid shit. But, um, but yeah, I mean, religion absolutely helps a lot of people when it comes to that. It's just that I look at it like, damn. Are people are, are people gonna re? Because I think it's gonna get worse before it gets better. Person, I You're think right. it's gonna continue to get even. Yep. I think women are gonna continue to be even. I think it's gonna be the, like right now. It's cool to be a sex worker as a chick. Like you got young people nowadays, right? Yeah, yeah, boys and girls saying I want to be an influencer, right? For the girls, I want to be an influencer that's sexualizing myself. For the guys, they want to be a moronic idiot that's you on know? Twitch running around doing stupid shit. So it's like. It, it's um the Man. youth is like just brainwashed and then you got you compound that with the music with tiktok with um you know with the, the, the pornography the ubiquitousness of uh, ubiquity of pornography. everywhere it's fucking crazy yeah. so it's like i look at it like fuck like okay how's the guy gonna navigate this nowadays like religion ain't gonna save you from these hoes right now maybe in like you said mm -hmm. in, two, uh, in two to three generations but you know you know what saves men though a mission absolutely i agree what agree. saves men is a mission yeah and if you give men a direction and they know that they're collectively working towards that that mission, man, it's incredible how much men can achieve, even with a small collective and a mission and an ideology. I agree. I swear. I agree. And that's why I'm like, I promise you can achieve anything with a mission and I, I will not give up attitude. Push that. <laughs> I, well, for me, you yeah. know what I mean? I'm going to push that. I'm going to push that direction. And it's been so successful 
in days past. And we've just forgotten we have our own institution too, the church. Mm -hmm. We have our own institutional power. And we can push back, but we have to get in their face. We have to stop pretending that Christianity is a be nice. Yeah, I was going to say, so what is your strategy? Because, like, you got gay pastors now. You got female pastors. You get in their face. You got you all go this confront stuff. Them. Like, you, you, ask, you ask these guys, just like what happened with TPUSA, when they asked them the question of all questions. You know, how is it that, you know, your LGBTQ push in conservatism is helping us win the culture war? And they had no answer to it. Right. By the way, stroke of political genius that that happened. Mm -hmm. Okay, they got in their face. They said, no, this is not part of Christian ethics. This is not part of our grounding foundation. What are we trying to conserve here? And that that type of thing. Yeah. The whole female pastor, gay pastors, all that wild shit is like, bro, it's just not Christian. It's not. And I'm sorry if you think that's sexist or anything or homophobic, but it's not. It's just standing on principles. It's standing on ethics that the Bible describes. I think Don't get mad at me. Get mad at the Bible. Of a value to general society than any other single thing men could be doing. Like I say it. Yeah. I mean, uh, hold on. I've got go a ahead. question for you, bro. Because sure. uh, I've been listening this whole time. Yeah. I, be I believe you're on the right track here. 100%. Um but I also come from a Christian background. Yeah. I believe what you're saying is true 100%. Only the issue here is that, like, the church itself is not at all fault, you know? I think the church itself is wayward. It's gone all the way left. Now, granted, how do you fix the issue at hand? It starts with the church. But the Pope himself, other pastors that are funded by the government themselves, are all to the left. How do you fix that? I'll explain. You are correct, especially in Catholicism, this is true. But you know what's interesting about the Catholic Church, and I'm an Orthodox myself, not Catholic. Mm -hmm. But what's interesting is you have, for the first time in an organization that I've seen, mm -hmm. which is involved in politics, you have top-down instead of bottom-up corruption. Usually it's corruption from the bottom, which goes up to the top, and then the top stays corrupt, right? Mm -hmm. In this case, a lot of Catholics are base, man. I mean, they're pretty awesome. They're the grounding foundation of Catholicism. They're the money givers. They're the tithers. Yeah. They're the people who are uh, making the Catholic Church possible to begin with. And it's like, it's really easy to go to those people and say, stop tithing. Stop tithing if they're going to go towards this, you know, this, this type of agenda. Stop feeding the money to them. That's how you get at Catholicism. Yeah, yeah. you know, Catholicism is all about marriage and kids when <laughs> it's sinful to wear condoms during sex. Now, that's, that's wild, but... Hey, it's going to make you be responsible about when you have sex. Because the bottom's not corrupt. The top is corrupt. You can go for the clergy, and the clergy can vote with their wallet. And, man, if you starve an institution of money, what happens, right? That's what they do to creators, right? They don't like what you say. They starve you of money, mm -hmm. and that shuts you up. And it's the same thing with any organization. It's the same thing within orthodoxy. It's the same thing within Protestantism cut off the money supply until they reform to what they're supposed to be. Mm. And it's like um, the Catholic Church, much harder because the corruption does go up to the top, in my opinion. Okay, but still the grounding foundation. Make sure to like and subscribe Catholics, if you still tune awesome. in. We appreciate you. pretty awesome people. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, I don't think it would take too much to begin to push them to say, stop tithing that way until, you know, some of this stuff goes by the wayside. Who are they going to follow? You or the Pope? Well, they're going to follow the Pope for the most part, but some of them are so frustrated with mm -hmm. what's going on with papal authority mm -hmm. um, or papal authority that I don't think it would take much, right? I'm not saying that one man's going to be able to push the whole tide. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is that you can begin at least to do your own part to move people towards that. Mm -hmm. Not saying one guy is going to be able to do it. That's absurd. Though those single people have been able to do things like this in the past, I think that. Yeah, everybody moving towards, just towards it in their own way, trying their hardest in their own way to move towards that. Yeah. Uh, that's how you see, see things get done. I like that. I would just say, though, uh, tell me if you understand this phrase, right will be wrong, wrong will be right in these times. Right will be wrong and wrong will be right. Yeah. So, but that's all times. But even more so now. Well, more so than when. So if you look, if you look at history... Mm. That, I mean, that if we're, if we're going to get into theology, mm -hmm. right, everything that is to, to come to pass has already come to pass, yes. right? 
could be way worse in 100 years, and it may have been way worse 200 years ago, <laughs> right? Ultimately, I'm not going to look at it, though, and say, hey, we're in the end times right this second, so I'm just going to throw in the towel and throw my hat on the couch, and I'm done. No, I'm, I'm, I'm going to still act within the ethical purview of which I've been given, and I'm going to, if Jesus comes tomorrow, right, and it was all for nothing, uh, then it was all for something. So that's the way, that's the way I see it. And 90% of the problems you see in society can be traced back to this idea. You know, it's interesting. Um, so I agree 100%. Yeah, all rant. of that. I've, argue said, that. I've said a bunch of that, that a bunch of times when <laughs> yeah. I'm talking to women. Uh, and, and, you know, people get angry at me. I've, I've, I've taken a stance. I've said, I genuinely think a woman's vote should be 50% of a man's. And, Sorry. whoa, holy crap, what are you talking about? And I'm like, well, How it's because you? of all the things you just listed. Yeah. Men are the ones that are typically predominantly in the military, in the police force, etc. Like, we're the enforcers at the end of the day to give you and protect the rights that you talk about. So it's like, you know, and then the other thing, too, is that a lot of them aren't in, like, infrastructure jobs that keep the country going. Um, I, I think you should only vote if you have skin in the game. And the military draft, they don't have to that's go how it the used to be. draft. It hey, used to be you had to have skin in the game. I promise you that's so fair. It's like, hey, yo. If you're if you're able to vote, who's able to send us to war? You should go to war too, and I would never want women to go to war. Uh, but that's basically saying that I don't want women to vote. But hey, it is what it is. I feel like hey, if fair is fair. If we gotta go die for somebody they voted in, then they should be dragged along too. Now that you know, there's a there's hundreds. They're gonna of ways be voting to a little more smart. Property ownership. Yeah, you can do single household voting. Yeah, only married couples can vote. And so now you and your wife's vote, it's for the whole household, right? No, That's a really good way to curb that. Yeah. There's another way to curb that, too. You can do selective service voting. You give six years of your life to the state unpaid, mm -hmm. and now you have the right to vote. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. yep, yep, That's yep. skin in the game. Yep. You don't have to make it based around – you don't even have to I take women before. out because what they have to, Yeah, they got to have skin about in the game. That. Government employee, your military mm -hmm. service, et cetera. So these women could just work for the government or work for the city or just own some shit – yeah, they go ahead and vote. They ain't even got to go fight. But some of them don't want to do that either. But I'm like, okay, then you can get a full vote. Sure. But if, like, you're just a chick on fucking OnlyFans, dude. Right. No right? way. Or you're, like, one of these chicks or that's, you're 18? Like, yeah. Like, Why is an eight? So how about how about this for the age gap argument, mm -hmm. right? Ah, uh, the 40-year-old 40, 40 take advantage of this poor 19-year-old girl. Then why can she negate his 40-year-old vote? If he is that superior to her that Damn. he can just instantly mm. manipulate her... Mm. Tell me why it is that she can nullify his vote. <laughs> that's hmm. good. Damn, that's actually really That makes God damn. no sense and is the dumbest thing that I've ever heard in my life, right? So well. um, you can mitigate it via household voting. Also, the, the trick is if you were to do like six years selective service where you weren't paid for it, but mm -hmm. then you could vote, right? You'd have high status in your community. I very much doubt that most women would do that. Hell no. Very much doubt no, they it. they wouldn't. And so, yeah, there's ways to mitigate this. And um, would, would you would you say yeah, where they that, don't got to go um, fighting in a the war? The reason why we've had incompetent leaders for for so long in the United States is because of them voting. Yeah, yeah, women vote always. Oh. Democrat for for, for <laughs> self yeah for for oh. self interest security. Um, yeah. we... self interest security, <laughs> and they don't care. It got real. Someone said it, man. It's, 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 it got real. He said, man, he's like, nah, when women vote, man, it ain't for the interest of this country, man. It's an interest for themselves. That's the problem. So when they vote, they're only they're, they're voting for the person who talks the sweetest to them. It's it's You're insane. crazy when I say this shit. No, women women How are dare you? Democrats Loan forgiveness, and Democrat progressives are scumbags and they're evil. From my from my perspective, utilitarian Democrats, they're they're all utilitarians, by the way. They're all uh, fundamentally hedonistically evil. And Damn. women push the Democrat vote like no other. And you know why? Because it's nice and socially acceptable. Yeah. Uh, I want to be accepted. I want everybody to, to you know, accept that I am, um, you know, part of the socially acceptable group. They don't ever want to be part of the non-socially acceptable group. They want to be part of the whole. Yeah. And so it's very unpopular, right? Now, if right wing, if right wing. Yeah, women are very hive minded. They, they go with the crowd. I think we all know that. Wingers, if that was considered like the popular thing, the the in crowd thing, that was the thing everybody was doing, they'd all vote Republican. <laughs> okay, yeah. but it ain't, and they they move towards uh, the Democrat vote, and the reason is, man, they really offer up a lot of security for women. 
Yeah. At the expense of men, but working class men, what are they all doing? They're all voting for Republicans. Yeah. Yeah. They're all voting to, hey, stop taking my money. Yeah. Hey, this sucks. Yeah. Hey, they, you know, I, I'd like to drive down the road that's actually paved yeah. instead of yeah. pothole filled, you yeah. know, with uh, why don't we put two more lanes? Looks like this. We could we could put two more lanes on oh, God. And instead of giving it to immigrants and sending it over to foreign aid, like, come on now. Well, what about us? You know what I mean? It, it, they, they vote um, with risk. Yeah. They don't mind taking some risk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Women, no risk. Yeah, yeah. No, no I mean, and I mean, when you look at it, like, uh, they're just, it's interesting how your, our biology even determines how we vote, yeah. right? Like, it's like, oh, more secure, they're secure. Oh, wait, you're going to give us, like, loan forgiveness and handouts and stuff? Yeah, you know what? I'll vote this way. I'm and weak. Yeah, man, they want the security. And, and a lot of the times, Democrats sell them that security, even oh, though they man. don't get it. They don't really get it. Right, it's it's kind of put they, it on a platter for them. Yeah, yeah, it's how it's, it's how they uh, got the the black vote too. How the Democrats got the black yeah. vote is by selling security too. bribery. You know, so it's like it's a bunch of bullshit, man. Oh yeah. Yeah. that's your yeah. pocket minions, the black vote. Yeah. Well, facts. what are they doing right now? Think about this. Like, I'll give you a really good. We'll read chats here in a bit, guys. Yep. Get them in now while you can, and we'll read them here. I'll in give a you one of the most fantastic um, kind of arguments on this. If you if they if they ever say, now we don't have security. Just look at abortion. Yep, Ukraine for just, show. Just Definitely look at Ukraine. Good point. Women want the right to abort for security. Agreed. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Mm. Israel. That's the only reason they want it, right? I don't want to be laid down with this little this little thing that's going to take 18 years of my life that I have to support and mother and blah, 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 blah. What are Democrats pushing? Mm. We want the, a woman's right to choose. Women need to be able to choose. Women need to be able to abort. Women need to be what? able to. But that's a security push, and that's mm. all it is. And that is how it's being pushed. Powerful. If they take away your right to choose, what happens to your security? Why you you wouldn't just be able to have promiscuous sex with no consequences anymore, right? That's yeah. that, that's not security. No. But that's a great example, right? This second that, that you can point to and say, white. look, yeah. other than for security, right? Why would this be being pushed? Yeah. Because that's the way women I see say. it. You know, it's interesting because when I look at women that vote on the right, nine out of ten times, it's either a. They're I say fresh and free separate their their mindset is like separate from the black community. It's like not the common mindset that a black man would have in a way. So I I, I hear what you're saying. They're married. They're married. Or B, mm -hmm. they are aligning with what their father or their oh, brother. Man, trust me, them. trust me. Nine out of ten. They wouldn't say nigga they, if they they, they, they thought they were like white. Super blue. It's like okay, single mom or didn't have a father in the household. There's like no. Strong masculine presence a lot in the college. Times. Well, and you know, a lot of times, and let's never take this out of the equation, <laughs> they simply don't think about it at all. That too. They yeah, simply no, have facts. never the thought. The cool thing to do is vote yeah, for Biden. Yeah, they yeah, simply yeah, never cool. even bothered thinking about it. And when you put them to the question and you watch their entire ideology crumble from a single question, you go, how did you never think about that ever in your life? It's well, and you know, a lot of times, and let's never take this out of the equation, they simply don't think about it at all. That too. Facts. They simply yeah, no, have facts. never thought. The cool thing to do is vote yeah. for Biden. Yeah, they right? simply. Bro, I promise you, it's like liberals got no type of deep thinking into their voting. It's like, dog, did you not see what the fuck these niggas is doing right now? Oh, well, you know, Trump's a dictator and oh my God, really? The Trump's a dictator? So, so you're going to send us into economic turmoil because you think Trump's a dictator? Simply never cool. even bothered. Like, what is Biden about doing then? The question, Sending your money you over without you or your consent. Question, you go, That's a real you dictator never shit. Think about that ever in your life. You went and destroyed my vote. <laughs> you wrecked my vote. You wrecked my brother's vote. My father's vote. You know what I mean? You. That, that's what you. You guys never even thought about this. They yeah. don't care. Not for one second. Yeah. So I agree with you that there's got to be skin in the game. I think. Um, you know, for women that obviously are in the military, civil service, in government, etc., they they have some skin in the game. Absolutely, your vote should be the same. But let's be honest, man. The majority of these chicks, like, I don't think an OnlyFans chicks vote should be equal to a man's vote. Fuck no, Listen, or a sex worker, or any of these chicks, because you know they don't win. have skin in the game. They don't have to go to, to the draft. You know how you win them over? Facts. TikTok. Listen, if you don't vote for our side, it's gonna be banned. They vote for it. 100%. <laughs> they want it. So they win. Well, well, women you? are highly susceptible to propaganda. Yeah. That's if facts. we can put ourselves in positions to be dealing in that propaganda, we can be dealing in the positions. To Man, look, bro. I've seen a girl look at a phone, look at what another person said, turn around and say it right back to me. Word for word, bar for bar, bro. I've seen the propaganda mind control. I've seen it.
firsthand. Watched her look at it, turn around, say that shit word for word, bar for bar for me. It was crazy. To influence women, and I can give you an example. Target them yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, hundred percent. That was what I was going to say. Yeah. If them. you can advertise towards women mm -hmm. the alternative message, they'll go for it. Look at Gillette. Like, I, I that's mean, how they got them all smoking. I always, I always, <laughs> use, I always <laughs> use this example, right? So it's like, yep. The example I always use a lot of times just to show like how much they control the marketplace. Gillette did an ad, right, back in like 2018, 2019. This is years ago now, right? They're feeling the consequences of it now. But where they said toxic masculinity, right? And they just shit on men for like a couple minutes, right? Like men are shitty, blah, 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 whatever. And they did that, right, to target females. But think to yourself, wait, hold on. Men's razors. This is a company for men. Why the fuck are they going to the opposite gender? That's like the equivalent to like Victoria's Secret said like, stop being toxic bitches. And mm -hmm. they just had a bunch of... Men. You know, OF chicks, no, like OF chicks being 304s and finessing dudes and divorcing them and taking their money. Mm. Like, could you imagine outrage if like Victoria's Secret did like that, did that and like made like a men's empowerment type commercial and said, you stupid whores need to do but better. There wouldn't be one. They, like, like yeah, yeah, they'd be yeah, done. Yeah, they'd be done. shit on. But Gillette mm. does that. They have the gall to do that. And just, they go after their, they shit on their target audience. But then in my head, it hit me. Oh, why? Because when you're an advertiser, you need to market to women. Even mm. at the expense of your target audience. Yeah. If that doesn't prove that the propaganda Damn. machine is always... The advertisers are simping. They selling out for the bitches. That's crazy. They, they, they simping. It's going to push the females. I don't know what else proves. You're going to ostracize the Look people buying Budweiser. your shit. Look at what happened with Budweiser. Yeah. You know? Yeah. They, it's, it's the same type of thing. <laughs> Men were not into that message at all. Yeah. Right? That was a very social justice style message with Mulvaney. You yeah. know what I mean? That was a big L. And it was a huge yeah. L, right? Huge L. But who was coming out supporting it and calling you a bigot and evil? Yeah. Bunch of women. Yeah. I can't believe you. Myron, how yeah. could you? Yeah. How, you're, you're terrible about You know what I mean? And it's like, <laughs> how what did you do? You? Yeah. It's, it's wild. And, and it's Are like, we? the fact that advertisers are willing to take the risk yeah. and alienate their the people that buy their shit at the, to, to go ahead and appease females, I do... I, it proves that we live in a gynocentric society, and and the advertisers know this, and that's what you look at the Super Bowl commercials. Literally, we were just in in Vegas. You look at the Super Bowl commercials; they were all targeted towards females. I mean, Patrick mentioned with companies ESG scores, so I get, I get it, it is a losing battle for money, but at the same time, to keep relevant and stay in these circles, you got to play the game on the level. Yeah, it's just like it's just yeah. crazy to me. I mean, like what, like in my head, like what, what, who was at the Bud Light meeting? Like, you know what, man, that's a good idea. Let's go ahead mm -hmm. and shit on the guys that drink this shit, right? <laughs> Which are, let's be honest, it's gonna be guys like you, Andrew. Well, it was right? a female. Like, like, it was a, well, that's that's what I used to like, like it. Yeah. I used to like Bud Light, right? Yeah, you know, like guys that drink Bud Light typically mm -hmm. are American guys between eighteen all the way up into the fifties that mm -hmm. are like America, like all that stuff, like. And you're gonna go ahead and just say, let me put this fucking dude in here. Like, yeah, but know. who came up with it? Oh, yeah. It was a woman. It was. it was a woman. It was. She came up with the entire marketing strategy. And, you know, there was, and there's no escaping that that's true, that it's all gynocentric based. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. But all right, I think a little come bit. regular guys flexing that shit. I'm like, what the fuck? I remember growing up as a kid, like, if you even said that you smoke weed, like, we'd kind of be like, huh, what could you, you fiend, you're a loser. But I don't know, man. It's like cool to be a druggie nowadays. It's, it's crazy to me. It's completely opposite. It's, well, my yeah. dad, like I said, Please. product of the 40s. You know, he said you were going to say, "What are you a nut?" Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. What are you a nut? <laughs> what are you going to? What are you going to strike for? Are you crazy? Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's how they saw it. Yeah. And you know what's so interesting? Why is mental illness so much higher now? Like, here's a good thought. Huh. Oh, no. uh, uh, what was that fucking drug that people used to relax? I'm on Xanax. <laughs> Like, well, my dad, bro, we used to make world, fun bro. of people. If, dude, if you had to, you like, I remember we used to make fun of kids. Wait, you take uh, Ritalin? Fuck Damn. wrong with you. Like, we used to laugh at people for that shit. Oh, you need Adderall to focus? You're an idiot. Like, we used to roast people for that shit. Now it's like, oh, just pop a little candy. Fanics. Like, there's a whole, and it's interesting because it's like, it's infiltrated the music. If you look at, like, hip-hop right in the 90s, right? Verbal. Lyrical things made sense. They're telling you a fucking story. You're listening to like I don't even listen to Slick Rick, but I can acknowledge the fact that he was like a good rapper, right? He's uh, like telling you a fucking story and shit. Like Cool Mo D, all these guys, right? Mm. Up until Jay Z, etc. Then we get into the late 2000s, 2010s, etc. Then you start getting people mumble rapping, not making I'm sense. I'm on lean. I'm on drugs, etc. <laughs> and you're like, what Man, the they're fuck all is fat. going on? Here? Like, where did it and all go? It, as the drug use like became more apparent in like the music, 
right? And people are just open about it. Facts. Now you got guys like flexing, like, yeah, I'm on some Xanax right now. Like, the regular guys are flexing that shit. I'm like, what the fuck? Now, I, no, I'm going to give you a slight warning towards weed, though, because as a, no, I can't even say it, but I'm saying I smoke cigars, but y'all know what I'm talking about. Now, I'm going to say this. Watch the weed you smoke because they are putting shit in this weed that is not natural. The weed that we were smoking back when we were kids, like with the reg, dredgy and all that, bro, it, it don't exist no more because they're putting chemicals in this shit. That's trying to fuck us up and kill our sperm count. So be careful. Be careful. Sometimes it don't need to be that strong. It don't need to be that strong, okay? Like, chill out. I remember growing up as a kid, Everything like, in moderation. If you even said that you smoke weed, like, we'd kind of been made, huh, what could you, you fiend, you're a loser. But I don't know, man. It's, like, cool to be a druggie nowadays. It's, it's crazy to me. It's completely opposite. It's, well, my yeah. dad, like I said, Please. product of the 40s, you know? He said you were going to say, what are you, a nut? Yeah. yeah right? Yeah, what yeah. are you, a nut? <laughs> what, are you going to, what are you going to strike for? Are you crazy? Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's how they saw it. Yeah. And, you know, it's so interesting. Why is mental illness so much higher now? Like, here's a good thought process for you to think about. If you look at the, the, the kind of trans agenda where they say, one of the reasons we need to affirm these genders is because if we do not affirm these genders, mm -hmm. right, these people could do self-harm, right? Mm -hmm. How come if there's just as many trans now as mm -hmm. there were, why weren't they doing self-harm? Yep. Hmm. Damn. Because it's cool to do it now? I don't know. Man, that was a, yeah, that's a good argument. It's like, so we pretty much affirmed them because, oh, if we don't affirm them, they'll just commit suicide. And it's just like, yeah, I know. That's why it's a mental problem. That's why they should be in, you know, with a therapist. Not being affirmed. Why is it that you my didn't bad, see my bad, bad, you too. in the my 50s bad, and the 40s bad. when nobody could my affirm bad. their gender? Disclaimer, really we are not transphobic. Just just saying key media. Wink, wink. Well, that's weird. If that's the case... Where's all the, where's the body count, right? Where's yeah, it? Yeah. Nowhere. Right? Mental illness has become a trend mm -hmm. and a social contagion. Just, and hey, that shout is out. Canada in the chat. Of that social contagion. But there hey, are many. shout out Jason. I agree with you, man. It, it's, it's cool now to say I have, and, and let's be honest, like nowadays, right? Like the, the whole um, psychology board is like run by, like by women. Like the, the, they, they strip Jordan Peterson of his, um, mm -hmm psychology credentials and it's like they'll prescribe you whatever it's like oh you feel like you have issues with focusing or you feel yeah. like you're crazy cool let's just give you these fucking drugs it all and then you, you know i don't even want to get into the pharmaceutical industry but it's like it's like they're incentivized to tell you that you're crazy right so that you, they can make some money on it well okay, who are okay. pharmaceuticals going to advertise to who are the most prone to being advertised to and so then you see it's a vicious who, circle. And who yeah. happens to be on all those drugs yeah. and the antipsychotics and the antidepressants and all of this. Well, same demographic who suffers from a way higher rate somehow than men do, even though men are, are the ones going through things which cause Damn. PTSD and they're going through wars and they're going through that all this stuff. Crazy. But somehow the mental illness is still higher on that side. <laughs> kind of weird. Kind of makes you think, God, well, damn. maybe they are marketing oh, something yeah, towards a population demographic, which is prone Canada's to propaganda. Yeah. And wait, hold on. And they make money from giving these they drugs They do. Out? Wait. Gajillions, right? <laughs> what? <laughs> what the fuck? Hold on. No way. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Wow. That's a good trend, though. It's crazy, bro. Like, and you guys see the fucking circle. We just brought her all the way around, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Bring it's it back. A, social social shame is shame is important. Uh, Cause I remember you're gonna go see a fucking shrink. What's wrong with you? Like, yeah. you're like you're, what are you like, nuts? You're, yeah, you're fucking crazy. crazy. Yeah, you know, this... they used to call it a shrink. Does that do people even use that term anymore? I haven't really. heard it. A shrink? Mm -mm. It's considered a bad word, probably. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, he, he been spending the whole night. Yeah, though. man. I just it's listening like crazy. On point. Uh, now that's facts, right. though. Okay, what do we got here? That's right. facts. Cause like you you can agree with Fresh and Fit sometimes, but you can't agree with them all the time. I promise you, because. There's some there's some things they do that only work for them. Like a lot of people got to understand that like you got to take bits and pieces of other people's advice and apply it to what you can do personally. We got Legato, uh, Legato goes uh Andrew the man I need my glasses. Humanoid Typhoon Wilson it's the top G of debates. Good to see him on Fresh and Fit. Good to see you too man. Thank you so uh, much for that. For him? 100 bucks? Yeah. 
Thank you so much for supporting the show. As, as, oh, sorry. As you know, um, this particular show, which people really enjoy, has not been treated very fair by some of the companies which uh, which are out there. So, showing your support is always a good thing. By the way, they have a badass studio here. I, they Appreciate gave me the that, tour man. when I came in. Thanks, it's bro. uh it's pretty sweet. Yeah. Thank you, brother. Appreciate that, man. Um, um, what we do we got here? here? Uh, All right. Let me see. Uh, okay. Reloading. <laughs> the Rumble chat, they're going crazy. I can see. They're saying, W. Andrew. They're saying, please uh, talk about the topic. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, uh, okay. Andrew, I think the argument for FNF position is that women are better at hiding their intent. Therefore, to Hold experience on. up to 50 oh. women is a way to see past their intent. Yeah, I think Andrew understands. He's our perspective <laughs> on that. Yeah. So, again, from the Let's second go through perspective, some of these super chats. flaws. Yeah. And I think me and Myron only really have this fundamental disagreement on what we want to the end to be I um i think, I think that we both i think both yeah, should have a family i yeah. think ultimately guys should have a family i agree with you. to your point though the end does not all just but that chick that's a good example and I'll, re of... I'll respond to it. it's sure. true that you can if you have five children have two of them end up being secular you still have three mm -hmm. that aren't children right, usually right. follow their parents political positions and their religion almost always and... all right you guys we're gonna go ahead and wind this down a little bit man we appreciate you for tuning in man it was fun it was interesting we got a lot of different perspectives today man we got a real conservative opinion and i love it you know if the lessons here you can take is that look i ain't gonna dick police you man if you want to sleep with 50 girls go ahead Go ahead. You are going to gain the experience that Myron is talking about. I will not lie to you. But, hey, if you just want to be a virgin, work on yourself as a man, that could, that could work out for you, too. But you got to find the right woman who's also going to be dedicated to that lifestyle, who's also going to be dedicated to your virtuous ways. Because not all women want to be virtuous. They barely want to follow their religion. These days... <clears throat> it's too much discipline there's too much shame involved and it'd be the same thing with these weak ass men sometimes there'd be weak ass dudes who really can't do the religion shit because they just have no discipline ain't that about a bitch they just hang on to negativity all they like and just never get the positivity of God Don't be like them. Don't be like them, man. You know, just closing thoughts to the beat. Beat by Kid Ocean. I appreciate y'all for stopping by. If you just tuned in, roll the video back. We got into some nice little topics. So roll the video back, man, and enjoy. But on these closing thoughts, man... <clears throat> I just can't believe it. I ain't gonna lie. There's just certain things I just couldn't believe with uh with the stance that Myron was taking at a certain point. It's like, damn, 50? Like, do you really need 50? Because even he had to sit there and admit, like, you know what? Maybe we could negate the whole 50. Hey, man, appreciate it, Jason. Appreciate it. Maybe we can keep the 50. Or my bad. Maybe we can negate the 50 and we can get into a religion-only marriage. A church-based marriage. A church-backed marriage. Then men can get the fairness that they deserve in a marriage. And not get fucked over by the system. Because we always want to work shit out. Because we, us guys always want to work shit out to our detriment. It's fucked up how much guys I know to try to work the marriage out, but the wife was just like, nope, mm -mm, I'm out, I'm done. Imagine what she would have to do, the improvements she would have to make on her life if there was no exit plan. If she couldn't just go out there and just fuck her family up just because she wanted to, well, God forbid, be a hoe. And then much less just, I want to be happy. Ain't that crazy? 
the way that when the government got into marriages, marriages stopped being a hundred hundred and they start being, well, 130. <laughs> Her mind is set. You know what? Actually, nah, I think it's because, well, you're right in certain terms, but if we had a church based marriage, I think it would be over for that. I think it'd be dead. It'd be like, well, where are you going to go? You and this, we got to work it out now. Your mind may be set that you want to leave, but you got to deal with the shame of the community after. So, what's, what are we going to do here? So, now you're going to have to change your mind and you're going to have to work on things with me. Now, if there's things the man ain't doing, then hey, though, shit, hopefully she's willing to bring it to light. A lot of women stay silent and just go on to the guy that is doing it. Which, hey, man, that's why you got to stay sharp, stay vigilant, and stay ready. You got to be that guy before she finds that guy. <laughs> and look, I ain't saying you can't fuck bitches, man. Look, we love hoes. I ain't going to lie. Over here at St. Comedia, we'll tell you. We love hoes. Hoes is needed. But don't indulge in hoes, though. Hit you like one or two just to know what they like just to know how they move just to know what their mindset is remember with these women it's always a psychology game it's always what you can get them to think because let's be real if a girl don't think too much of you them legs don't open i promise unless you paying her lord knows you don't want to devalue yourself like that and that's part of being virtuous it's not devaluing yourself to go out there and buy it so that's why they call it a trick. A trick has to buy what a real man can get for free. I heard that from my old head, actually. So don't ever trick yourself out your value. You better than that. I promise you better than that. Don't do that. Work on yourself. Go ahead, wait it out. And soon these girls going to be tricking for you. They gonna be simping for you. We add some damn value. But hey, man. I appreciate y'all tuning in. Make sure to like and subscribe. Man, this is Seth from Satan Key Media. Peace.